Do we move out? Not yet. We have to let them gather up first. Okay. I'm no artist or anything like that, but that was super sketchy. Alright, episode 7 of the Attack on Titan dub has hit air, and um, I... There's a moment with Gene. Uh, in the original, the original version of the Japanese and the subtitles, you know, when they're all kind of sitting around and they're they're not feeling all that optimistic about their odds of surviving, and um, he's talking with Connie about you know what the plan is, if anything, and Gene's just kind of like, uh, we're fucked. Like there's no way out of this. He kind of mumbles to himself like, if I had known this was going to happen, I would have, you know, done this. I would have told them. <sighs> That could have been anything, really. Um, I figured that they were kind of alluding to something later on. Um, maybe we would find out a little more what he meant. Now, in the uh, in the English dub, they have been they're much more specific. In that same scene, now he says, "God, what a dull life this turned out to be. I never even got to tell her just how I feel." This seems to imply that Jean now has some kind of a love interest. Maybe he meant Mikasa or something? Before, the, it was very vague about who he was talking about. It could have been a family member, it could have been a former friend, it could have been... Uh, it could have been any number of things, but now in the dub they've, they've specified that it's some kind of a love interest. Is that a spoiler? Did they... did the dub intentionally spoil it. Okay, I guess that's not really a spoiler because it doesn't really change character, plot, theme, or anything like that. Um, but it, it, it was an interesting choice. Ashley Birch as Sasha has not really gotten much of a chance to shine a whole lot. She did a little bit in the third episode uh, where she was introduced, but she kind of had her introduction and then she had one little scene later and that was kind of it. And in this, I really like it because the episode in general is very bleak. It's very down. Everyone is sitting around just kind of like, Oh, what do we do? And they even have one guy just load up a gun and just blow his brains out. So no one's feeling good about this. And Sasha comes in with her blind, blind optimism. And she's, she's very gung-ho and she wants to get things done. You've got to have somebody who can reflect that in her voice. Not just being loud. Because it's, it's one thing to be loud, it's another to genuinely give off a sense of optimism and, and, and cheeriness. And Ashley Birch as Sasha, uh, her voice is a stark contrast to everything else going on. I mean that in a good way. Come on guys, we can do it! Right? Let's go! If we all work together, we can make this happen. I know we can. All right? I'll take the lead. One of my favorite moments in both the original and in this, um, I might be the only one that actually likes this moment. You guys can tell me if you liked it too, but I feel like I'm the only one um, that thought this was really cool in both versions, was uh, right after Mikasa and Jean and Sasha all kind of charge off, um, the rest of the cadets all, like, had this collective roar of excitement and adrenaline and, uh, newfound confidence. And together, they sound really, really good. Damn it. All right, let's go! Again, just kind of a minor thing, personally, it's, it's just one of my favorite moments that I remember a lot from the show. There's a moment a few seconds later that I want to address. Um, I don't know all the technical know-how, but th when Mikasa's flying around, she kills one of the Titans, and uh, we hear a little bit of Armin uh, in his head, what he's thinking in the, uh, of Mikasa as he watches her flying recklessly around. And it feels like the sound balancing is off, because 
it suddenly becomes really difficult to understand what he's saying. It's not a matter of pronunciation or anything like that, it's just that for some reason it feels like hit, hit, the volume for his voice is so much lower than the music and the sound effects, and it's kind of, it's, it drowns him out a little bit. I can't really understand what he's saying. I feel like that should not have even gotten past like the production floor. That should have that very much should have been addressed. Um, so point for that, I guess. I'm still not really sure what the red flashing uh, thing is when Mika says kind of is has kind of given up and she's kind of thinking to herself and the Titans attack. Yeah, that thing. I'm I was never sure what in the hell I was supposed to be looking at when that happened, and I guess I didn't. I wasn't, like, expecting that to be answered. It's not a burning question that I had, but I was still kind of curious what that was supposed to be or represent or... And now one of the more controversial changes that people uh, are all in up in arms about and pissed off about, as if there's not enough things that they're pissed off about that are that's stupid, but um, the Titan voices have actually been redubbed as well. In the original Japanese, it was literally just a guy going rawr, into a microphone and then they were just dropping it down a couple of octaves. That's literally all they did with the Japanese one and it was, it was kind of creepy because they still sounded like humans um, despite the fact that you know they don't act like it. And now in this they, they have changed it quite a bit. They sound much more animalistic. Um, there's not much uh, humanity left in them. They do they sound like wild animals. fine with it. Um, it's a little less creepy, but it, at the same time, the Titans themselves look creepy enough. Like, you don't necessarily need that doesn't sound creepy to... Think of it this way. We are seven episodes in now at this point. Only now are we hearing what Titans sound like. And this entire time, people are, are still... Whether you're watching it for the first time with the dub, or whether you watched it with the Jap in the original Japanese version, they were still plenty creepy enough as it was. Um, so there was there was no real need. You don't need them to sound super creepy to be creepy. They, just the way they move and the way they look is nightmare fuel on its own. And actually, the main uh, crux of one I wanted to talk about was uh, the new Titan that shows up at the very tail end of the episode. Um, here's here's how he sounds. And now here's what one of the normal Titans sounds like. Did you catch it? Okay, well, so if you didn't, um, they actually play those two sounds back to back. So let's listen to them each uh, unedited, just back to back from each other. They sound exactly the same. And yet the show goes to, without even knowing really, some of us who, the, those of us who have uh, watched the original version or have gotten it spoiled for you, know what the deal is with, the, with this new Titan, alright? We already know that. Taking that off aside, completely forgetting that, and just putting ourselves in the moment, in the shoes of new people... This is still a big deal. This is still obviously a very different Titan. The characters go to great lengths to explain this thing is so, like, what is this thing doing? Like, what is it? Because this is not anything we've seen before. Um, it behaves very differently. It even looks very differently from most of the other Titans. He's, 
he's ripped, he's got like a flock of hair, and he's got like his mouth jaw thing going on. He's different in literally every way possible from all the other Titans, yet he sounds just like them. And it's a little disappointing, because you would think that that would be personified when he... You would think he would have a distinct sound to him, something deafening, something intimidating, because he looks very intimidating. <laughs> Whereas the other Titans range from being creepy to kind of derpy. And again, because he is, uh, he is a unique Titan, um, the fact that he doesn't have a, a unique sound to go along with him is a little disappointing. As a point of contrast, here's how these two titans sounded in the original Japanese version. Do you see kind of what I mean? How you hear him and you can hear a difference along with... It's just not the same. You hear him, that new titan, yelling and you do kind of shrink in your seat a little bit, and then the one roars back at him, you're like, it's, that's not the same thing. I'm perfectly fine with, on paper, the idea of changing the Titan voices a little bit. I just was, I, I think that making this new Titan sound exactly the same as all the others is a bit of a letdown. I do have to give the point to the original Japanese for this episode. Um, it's a close call, though, but it's, it's, it has less to do with the performances and more just to do with... Uh, the technical aspects of the episode, um, touching things up, uh, things that things that I would expect from a professional studio to fix didn't seem fixed. Uh, the sound balancing in the original was stronger. Um, the, the the Titan, I like the Titan sounds better in the Japanese version. Granted, I am not siding with anyone that is throwing a tantrum about the Titan re dubbing voices. It's fine, guys. Just because it's different, it doesn't make it bad. Overall, I, I have to give it to, um, I do have to give it to the original Japanese. Still, really good episode. Uh, those of you that are watching this for the first time on uh, Toonami, the English dub, um, you're getting a good deal out of this. By the way, I got this shirt also. I don't know if you can see it. I got this shirt also from redbubble.com. Um, this one was from uh, an artist named Belligerent. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I will link it down below. They've got some other Attack on Titan type shirts that are fun and unique without being like a poster board that just says Attack on Titan. Um, so you can go check those out. And otherwise, um, I will see you guys for episode 8, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, okay, bye.